Transformers, more than meets the eye. Autobots cleans their pedal to destroy the evil forces of... Hello everybody, this is Toys R Us. For this special figure showcase, we're going to be looking at the 2014 Deluxe Class Thrilling 30 Skywarp figure. So what we're going to do with this video, we're going to have a detailed look at him in both of his modes to help you decide how you want to display him. We'll have a look at how his accessories can be used again in both modes and see the function of them individually and together. We'll have a look at the rest of the package, including the comic, the instructions and a sealed example, just to have a look at the artwork on it. We'll also do some obligatory comparisons with some other figures in the toy line and other Skywarp figures. Before we get started, I want to dedicate this video to a friend and subscriber to the channel who is TF Fan Geek, who also has his own YouTube. He's such a great guy. He always comments on all of my videos. I really hope he likes it. And this is especially because these three, this particular toy line was the first toy line that enabled him to get all three of the Seekers. So let's have a look at him. Here he is then. And I know straight away some people might be picking that he is transformed incorrectly but this is what i wanted to show you if you buy this and you're still lucky enough to find one sealed you can see that inside the package the nose cone at the front is folded out and the it shouldn't be when it's in the robot mode this should actually be folded underneath like so there and these also just need to go back a teeny tiny bit not too much but they're just protruding a little bit too far forward right then let's have a look at the figure because it's quite funny some of these they were misassembled mistransformed skids is the best example wait till i do a video on skids and you'll see exactly what i'm on about so let's have a look at skywarp himself then now there's a really big problem with this which i'll come to in a second but i still love this figure look at the detail there on his face it's brilliant it's even got light piping in his head so if i get the light and i shine it there see his eyes light up fan fantastic loving that it's brilliant let's have a look at the articulation then so the head will turn side to side it does in a fashion go up and down but that is mainly due to transformation processes now this is the problem that you can see now if i turn to the side and if i slightly move the arm out now i really don't like that as i say so i it's it's bad let's be honest but hasbro get away with it because when you look at him from the front you can't tell i mean that is a huge huge gap and there's no way that you can really fill it but let's have a look at the shoulders then so you can go all the way around like that it does move backwards and forwards a little bit but again you can tell that's for transformation purposes mainly the elbow or bicep joint it's basically near enough a double joint which is brilliant the wrist actually turns around as well so you've got quite a bit of articulation in them arms. There's no waist or hip swivel because that, as you can see, is fused together. You do have the knee joint. The hips, again, will swivel up and down and out to the side. And you've actually even got a little ankle rocker as well. Well, as I say, you know, you can't you can't argue with the fact that there is a huge gap in the side of him. And I'm not making excuses for Hasbro because I do still love the figure, but they get away with it because it's it's you, you can't see it unless you're posing it from the side. Let's have a quick look at the accessories then. I'm not going to do them attached. I'm going to do that a bit later on in the video. You've got these two cannons. And these, of course, are redecos exactly the same as he is as the Starscream Fall of Cybertron figure. So the two guns, you can attach them by the dowels and, well, the tabs and the holes together. And this, of course, resembles the Neutron Assault Rifle from the game Fall of Cybertron. The cool thing about it is if you turn one, the other one goes as well. And we'll have a look in a bit more detail at that when it comes to the next part of the video. Very briefly, I'm just going to move these. And we're going to look at the instructions just quickly. And I think these instructions work incredibly well, especially for Skywalk, because they are all the Decepticon colours for the instructions they used were purple, black and white, which is, of course, his colours. Now, the good thing about this, and this is what I'm showing you here, and I think they should do this with more new instructions. You've got on the one side, robot to jet. And then on the other side, you've got Jet to Robot, which I think is brilliant. And they need to perhaps reintroduce that with some of the figures. So what I'm going to do now, then we're going to have a look at him in his alternate mode. And then we're going to see how we can attach the weapons and the accessories to him like that. Let's look at him in his Jet mode then. 
Okay, so here we are, and as you can see, he is in his alternate mode. A quick apology for not doing it on camera. Two reasons. One, to keep the length of the video down, and two, not to spoil it for yourselves. The transformation process is very simple in honesty. You can pretty much make out there that we folded his legs out, tucked his arms in, folded the chest out and the nose piece that was incorrectly transformed, and we've just turned the head back there. So, let's have a look. Here it is, Cybertronian Jet. And again, I just like it. I can't fully explain to you what it is, why I like it so much. Maybe it is the fact that I do really like the Starscream deco, which was, of course, used previously. I just think it looks really good. It makes up for the fact that um, it has got the gap in robot mode. And yeah, I just I just really like it. So because it's basically a redeco, it's got the feature that isn't even mentioned in the instructions. And that was that you can remove the tail fin here. And I don't know why this isn't in the instructions, because it must have been a forward planning or, you know, something they thought of. Because you see these five millimeter pegs, these are exactly the same, obviously, as these. So what you can do, you can clip these together like so. And then, of course, you can see what's going to happen. There's the two dowels there. Here's the two dowels here. And because it's a brand new toy, you can see, there you go. I mean, that looks stunning as well, doesn't it? Brilliant. And again, we'll all turn them on. They all turn. You could even, if you really wanted to, put the tail fin back in the top of that. It's only because I've never done this before. That's really stiff. You could put it. You don't need to. You don't need to at all. But it looks, it's, again, it's just a different mode. I love the fact that these had quite a bit of playability. Again, it was a basic transformation. But the things that you can do with them, for that reason, as I say, makes, makes up for it. Let's just pop this back into place then. Turn it round. It does cover them up. So you've got a couple of choices with where you want to locate these. You've got holes under the wings. You've even got the holes on the back of where the forearms. You've got holes on the side of the legs. There's loads, to be honest. As I say, there's so many different places that you can attach this. Let's go with some underneath the wings just to start off with. So we can pop them there. Again, apologies. This is... I think that looks brilliant as well. Look at that. It does, doesn't it? I think that's how they've got it in the reverse of the box, have they? Yeah, they've gone for the under the wing look there as well. Let's have a look at where else we could move it. We could move it to, if we take these ones, and let's go with the side dowel there under the wing, like so. The noises and the reasons why it's creaking is because it's brand new. I'm one of these people who's guilty. Until now, doing these videos, I used to buy figures and just put them on the shelves. There you go. I think, again, that looks, that gives it a whole new dimension. I like that one as well. And then I think the final one, no, I've done under the wings, haven't I? You can just turn and take it further back. No, take it further back like so. Not as good. But again, you can see what I mean. There's loads of playability in that. While we've spun the card round at the back, we might as well have a look. Again, I can't keep reiterating how much I like this Thrilling 30 toy line. Some people didn't really like it. I liked it purely because it was exactly that. They look back at G1 stuff. You've got the tech specs at the back, which is stunning. The artwork, well, it's basically a screenshot, isn't it? Let's be honest. This is a product shot, but the artwork, which I'm referring to, if I spin it back around. In fact, if you want to read that, you can pause it and read that now. But the artwork there, look, in the comic is brilliant. It's even got the light up eyes, which he does have. I can't, they've just done a brilliant, brilliant job. Before we go back to Robot, let's just have a look at the comic. The comic was really good considering it was free. So it was your ID, sorry, IDW comic. It was a different cover. It was obviously an exclusive. You know, there's a lot of comic in here. There's not like a few pages like the collector's clubs. There's a good full comic there. It's brilliant. Great little Phoebe. Freebie, not Phoebe. Okay, what we're going to do then for the final part, we're going to come back with him in his robot mode, have a look how we can use his, his accessories, and we will do some comparisons as well. Right then, we're back for the final time, and again, he's in his robot mode. So, let's have a look at how we can attach the weapons. You've got, as I said, I've mentioned the forearm, so we can either attach one on the forearm. Either way, there's two ways of doing this. You can use the small dowel, in the side there, which is obviously more traditional, sort of, again, G1-esque uh, Skywarp. Or you could either put the gun in his hand. Again, you can put the other one in his hand. What I do really like as well, though, is again, they do combine. So you've got a couple of ways of doing this. You've got this particular way where we're going to join them again. 
and it just basically looks like it's got a huge rail gun. Let's see if I can do this without it falling apart. There again, unfortunately, is that huge side gap. Right, so you've got the larger dowels there. That one's gone straight in. Is this one going to? I really like that. I think that's just a great idea. Of course, it makes him a bit top heavy. Let's see if I can get him to balance. Probably wouldn't even get him to balance on carpet if I wanted to, to be honest. But if you're doing battle scenes or play sets, you know, it looks really good. Liking it. I'm going to keep it in that particular mode again just very quickly because obviously if you remember what I mentioned about the bed on the back, if you just wanted to as well, you could of course attach it to the back while he's in robot mode. And again, you've got a whole new look to it this can even be held like a bit of a shield if you wanted it to be it doesn't have to be it's just a silly idea that i'm running with there you go it looks good right i'm just going to put them how i would normally display him and then i'm going to do some of the comparisons with a few other figures as well so to be honest i think i'm going to put them with guns in the hands a bit like rather than on his forearms to be honest usually i always put them on his forearms because of course that's how they are in g1 but for this particular one i'm going to put it there in his hands right so let's stand him up and in fact let's bring up some sky oh, we need to go back a little bit take that out of the way for now right okay let's go g1 sky warp so there's g1 sky warp and of course there are the weapons on the side of his arms here is Thrilling 30 Thundercracker, which you can see uses the same mould. And in fact, I've put the guns in his hands as well. And then let's just put this little guy at the front. Combiner Wars. <laughs> Skywarp. So quite a few to go by. And again, let's be honest. Hasbro, Takara, they both love, love a redeco of the mould, don't they? But there we go. Let's start to take all these away. And just finish up. Again, you can probably tell, by the way, I've spoke so highly about it. It is basic. I know it's basic. I know it's got a huge gap in the side. But again, you can't see it now. And they did use the same mould over and over again, even with this particular toy line. But I just really like it. And it was great to be able to pick this up and go down memory lane and have a good look at it again. So for the same reason, I hope you guys enjoyed it too. I hope it helped you with the decision if you wanted to get one for yourself. And of course, most importantly, I hope TF Fan Geek liked this as well so take care guys keep your ideas and suggestions coming in and i will do my best to keep on top of them all and of course anything you want me to do any videos of any figures just let me know and i'd be happy to help thank you very much thanks for watching like and comment and don't forget to subscribe